did anybody want to say anything? Okay, uh, if I, not, I, yeah, please go I, ahead. Uh, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, what about systematic reviews that are actually based on preclinical studies? Okay. Where would what? we place those? Okay, well, this is fantastic question because it automatically leads to the next slide that I'm about to present. Uh, just look at this translation diagram that I presented earlier. As we undertake early studies, and let's say the basic studies are those early the systematic way. Perform our new early studies. And this process then allows us to firm up the early evidence, make it stronger. And this cycle of reviewing, going back to do new studies and doing new reviews continues until we are able to perform the definitive systematic reviews that allows us to get the regulatory approvals and the guidelines made. I, I hope that makes sense. clinical outcome of the patient. The etiologic research addresses the initial part of this flow diagram, then diagnostic research, then prognostic and therapy research. And all of this can be carried out as primary study by collecting data directly from patients or by collecting data from published studies, which are put together into systematic reviews. So this in a nutshell is the process of framing questions. It has examined a patient is going to go for surgery and you're going to offer them various options for their treatment. You may offer them the existing treatment or you may offer them a new alternative in your research. So the existing treatment could be the standard therapy. The new treatment could be the new exposure or the intervention. And the participants are the people who have this type of problem, leading them to be admitted to hospital. And after giving them either new treatment or standard therapy, if you follow them up to study their outcome, then this element, these four elements, describe a structure that you can use you frame to frame your research question. And the study design can be a cohort study or a randomized control trial. So using this example, I turn now to a specific question. This question is, can coronavirus cause a lymphoproliferative disorder? A simple question. In this question, the participants are the people at risk of having coronavirus. The exposure is those who have coronavirus tested positive by PCR or other tests. And 
The control condition is those without the coronavirus tested negative on coronavirus. And then we follow the people up to see whether they have the disorder or they don't have the disorder. For example, by obtaining a blood test or a tissue biopsy. And the type of study design, which we are going to discuss in more detail in the next 40 minutes after the break, could be a cohort or case control design. So taking this as an example, is any one of you able to frame the question you are studying in your own work? In the remaining five minutes, I'd be grateful for at least one or two example questions put forward. And then during the break, each one of you will have about 10 minutes to think about what you are addressing in your thesis. And when we return, you will present your question to this webinar for us to uh, learn about the question framing process. So I would be grateful if uh, any colleague would come forward with their example question. Uh, earlier, uh, Costa came forward and made a comment in the chat. Uh, feel free to make your comment in the chat or even unmute your microphone and uh, say uh, something about your question. And look, if it's not clear to you, just frame your question in general and I'll help you frame it in the structure that I've described uh, for us to become clear as we go forward. Hello, do you hear yes, me? Yes, please, go ahead. Yeah, Thank I'm, you for coming uh, forward. I am Hoika, I'm a dentist, and my question regarding my research would be, does a specific fluoride varnish help with um, post-radiation caries? Okay, so who are the participants? Uh, in general, the participants are those who have had radiotherapy of the head and neck region because of the head and neck cancer diagnosis. Okay, so people who will be exposed to radi radiation as part of their treatment. So these yes. are the participants. Yes. Then exposure and control. Normally, there are two groups. Normally, um, I would choose the exposure would be the one of, well, all are basically the, the patients with head and neck cancer who have undergone uh, radiotherapy, but the exposure group would be the ones uh, we are testing the new varnish on that is used in so the uh, new, other populations while... So the new, so the new varnish is your intervention. Yeah. And the comparison is presumably the, the standard yes. varnish. Yes. Okay, very good. And then what is the outcome? The outcome is caries. Uh, the outcome is either prevention of caries or yes. um, slowing of the progression of it. And how is caries measured? Um, well, there is a couple of indexes uh, regarding the depth or the activity of the lesion. Hello? Thank you for coming forward. And for putting forward a, your question as an example for all other colleagues. Thank you. Uh, uh, 
so what I would like is we are going to take a break in just a moment. But when I return after 10 minutes, it would be fantastic if a few more colleagues would present their question in exactly the same way, uh, covering your participants and the new intervention or exposure and the standard and the outcome. And once we have covered these, we will then move on to study the issue of study design concerning question. So with this, uh, we'll bring this session to an end.